I'm Kevin Mims with the Invading Sea, Florida-wide media collaborative that reports on climate change in the state. As part of that effort, we started the Business of Climate Change, a weekly interview with businessmen and women whose companies are either affected by the warming climate or address climate challenges. Today's conversation is with Anna Sampson, director of We Are Neutral, a nonprofit organization that helps businesses and individuals understand, reduce, and offset their carbon footprints. Anna, thanks for talking with us today. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So, Anna, tell me a little bit about what We Are Neutral is and what it does. Sure. So we we got our start about 12 years ago. Um, What we do is we really try to help quantify uh, individual and business carbon footprints um, and their impact on the planet. And then we can help them do enough good to basically offset that carbon footprint. So um, we have about 150 business partners that we work with. um, And again, yeah, we just help them understand, you know, what are the biggest components of their carbon footprints, kind of some areas of opportunities. And then we help them achieve carbon neutrality. So um, we have essentially a, a carbon neutral family that we, we call it of, of people and businesses that have taken responsibility for that carbon footprint and achieved carbon neutrality. Um, and then we also try to try to brag on their behalf. Um, so as soon as they achieve carbon neutrality, we really try to um, make them industry leaders and uh, encourage other businesses and individuals to do the same thing. So what are the costs involved with a business or homeowner pursuing carbon neutrality? So the way that we work is we we don't think it's necessarily fair for you to uh, go down the road of achieving carbon neutrality if you don't know what that looks like. Um, So we work with you to calculate your comprehensive carbon footprint. That can include as much or as little as you want. Some people want to include every sheet of paper that they write on. Other people just want to include utility use and, um, and travel. So we work with you to calculate that footprint. And then um, footprints are, are calculated in, uh, in terms of metric tons of CO2 equivalent. Um, so then at that point, we are able to understand how many tons of carbon emissions you're responsible for with your lifestyle or your business. And then we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So we ask for a $15 donation um, to offset per ton. And then that um, those dollars go towards offsetting and reducing carbon emissions for the future. And how does becoming carbon neutral benefit businesses and individuals? We've seen a lot over the years. <laughs> the list, I think every single business and individual, it's, it's completely unique. Um, we work with some businesses that don't need our marketing services. They have million dollar marketing budgets of their own. Um, and then we work with, you know, really new, just off the ground businesses where, you know, us being able to um, kind of shout them from the rooftops in terms of their environmental responsibility really helps get their name out there for the very first time. So over the years, I have seen people benefit this from this, not only from a tax uh, perspective. Uh, I think it's, um, I think people a lot, almost all of the people that we work with in businesses, they, they approach us because they feel like it's the right thing to do. Um, so I think that there's a lot of benefit there and just knowing that we all need to be doing something and we kind of, we make it easier for you to um, identify what those key elements are. Um, so yeah, the list keeps growing with each business that we work with. We try to work with them year round to understand um, what might bring them value from this partnership. And then we just add it to our toolbox. Um, so lots of different things. It's really kind of a beautiful, beautiful model. Got it. So backing up just a second for, and, and for those that may not um, completely know, uh, what is the relationship between carbon and climate change? If that makes right. sense. We have, what we have is a, a warming planet. Um, a lot of people are used to, I remember when I was in high school, it was called the greenhouse effect where you have a greenhouse and um, heat can come in and it can't get out. And so that's the situation that we're dealing with. And these greenhouse gases are, you know, creating a blanket and our, our, um, our earth is warming, our oceans are warming, um, and we are the reason that these <laughs> emissions continue to be, um, you know, in terms of pollution, per se. So you drive your car and you're, you're um, burning fossil fuels that emits a greenhouse gas that just creates a blanket around our planet. The heat can't escape, and that's when we're starting to see some devastating effects of that. So um, it's a little bit misleading that everybody talks about carbon footprint. 
carbons. It's not actually carbon, it's carbon dioxide that is the issue. Carbon is actually what makes us alive. Um, and it is also, we, we take into account all greenhouse gases, um, but from a mathematical perspective, you have to have a common denominator. And so that's why it is uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. So we're basically calculating all greenhouse gases and saying, well, in terms of carbon, this is the number of, of tons. Um, so yeah, that's really, you know, I was an architect before this and um, I just believe in math and being able to quantify to create change. So you can't, you can't improve what you can't measure. So as long as I can slap a number on the impact that I have on the planet, I now have a, a metric to use um, for the good that I need to do to compensate for it. Um, so that's really why, you know, we, we use math as a tool to, to try to restore balance to our planet. Got it. So drilling down and getting even a little bit more granular, um, how does this come into play here in Florida? I mean, what are, what are we seeing um, from a, a climate change thing uh, perspective that um, maybe businesses are, are here or are, are, are approaching you for and, and trying to reduce that carbon footprint? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm from Gainesville, Florida. So I'm a Florida person, um, and so I'm very happy that we are neutral. We got our start here in Florida because we have, since we began here, we have a huge Florida base of partners. Um, we also try to make our carbon reductions and offsets local to the offsetter. So we have a lot of projects that are happening right here in Florida. Um, Florida is also the ground zero of climate change. I mean. Florida is a peninsula. We're surrounded by water, um, hence the name of uh, the invading sea. Uh, so, you know, we've started to see properties on the coastlines. Are people are starting to, you know, uh, realtors are starting to understand that the coast might not be the coast too much longer. Um, but yeah, I think I think you know the other thing too. I, I've heard you know if we can't save the upgrades, like that's kind of like a a test for us. So. There's just a lot of goodness here in Florida. I love it. And um, I think that, you know, from my experience, it's so many people want to do something. They know need, they need to do something. And they're just not quite sure where to start. Um, and so at We Are Neutral, we're really trying to get our name out there and let, let people know that we're here um, because we really try to make it simple for everyone. And um, we're not judgmental environmentalists. <laughs> Um, we're not the pollution police. We just really try to make an accessible um, avenue for people to identify the key components to their footprint and offset it. And in Florida, we have had just a welcoming audience um, for the last 12 years. So very grateful for that. Got it. So what are some simple things everyone can do to reduce their carbon footprint? First is awareness. Calculate it. Um, everyone's different. So you might, you might have guilt about, um, you know, how much meat you might be eating, but then you're flying 10 times a year. So for me, the biggest thing is to have a sense of perspective um, to know what is worse. Um, I will say that the largest contributors to anyone's carbon footprint is your utility bills and your travel. So turn off your lights, um, bump your AC up a little bit so you might be a little warm, not uncomfortable. Um, so really anything that's using fossil fuels, um, we need to, we need to get it under control. So drive less, um, don't circle around the parking lot for the, the best spot, just park. Um, and, and be, and be aware, you know, you'll feel a little bit, not bad, but just be aware when you're getting in your car, what that does versus when you hop on your bike. And I mean, I drive my car, um, but, but I'm aware of it. So I would say that's just huge, huge is um, we've got to have a shift in the way we're thinking um, and not just, you know, these these tips like, you know, recycling. That's something that should have been mastered in the 70s. So it's we're getting to a point of too little too late. And so I think it comes down to a real personal shift in perspective. Um, when we get up in the morning and start our day. Um, so that that would be, I guess, a very idealistic, holistic answer to that. Um, but reach out to us. I am I love calculating footprints for fun and happy to calculate, you know, and identify um, some things that everyone can be doing to, to have a less negative impact on our planet. So, and we asked uh, a similar question to just about everyone we interview. 
And um, how can the Florida legislature help businesses and individuals in their efforts to reduce their carbon pr- footprints? Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think as individuals, we need to make it known that it matters to us. Um, so I, I'm going to put the, um, you know, I, I think first it's us making sure that it's known that this is something that we will not settle for anything less. Um, and then I think, you know, having responsibility, um, again, quantifying, um, having at least, you know, uh, greenhouse gas inventories that, um, you know, can start to create a baseline of what we're not going to go back to. Um, and I think, yeah, just, just continuing to make it a priority. I, you know, we, we're facing a lot of issues right now as a country. And um, obviously this is the one I was, I was born to uh, <laughs> uh, fight, but um, yeah, I think, I think we as people need to apply pressure. And then I think that the response needs to be, you know, um, very matter of fact, very baseline measurements, order of operations, let's get this under control. Anna, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.